everyone and welcome to a packing video. I am currently in Southeast Asia. Leave your guesses down below where you think I am but you'll have to watch to the end to find out and I basically want to share everything that I bought with me because I'm trying to be super minimal basically. I'm trying to be a super minimal packer and I travel carry on only flying from Australia. Carry on only means everything you bring has to be under seven kilos so i've noticed that with a lot of people's packing videos they're like oh my bag's under seven kilos or ten kilos but it's just their dode luggage that goes like in the top compartments and they're still allowed to bring like a personal item and that's where they'll put like all their heavy stuff and that seems to be how people get away with it but literally every single thing that i bought apart from things that i've physically wearing had to be under seven kilos really not a lot when it comes down to it and i just wanted to kind of go through everything that i bought and some things that i've already had to buy that i was lacking and just share what i packed basically if you want to see more of my travels around southeast asia and where i'm going and also my previous trip to vietnam make sure to subscribe and also like this video it helps a lot when people like the video, leave a comment, even if it's just to tell me that I brought too much stuff with me. I'm really keen to hear your thoughts. Could you travel with this little stuff? Is this way more stuff than you travel with? Let me know. But let's get into it. So first of all, the bag. This is the Osprey Fairview Aftercheck. I'll leave the link down below, but it's basically this version of the Osprey that has this detachable uh, backpack on it. So you can actually unzip this. I actually bought this after traveling to Vietnam, so this is a really new bag for me. I haven't really figured it out yet. But yeah, you can detach this and it's like a full backpack. And the reason that I wanted a bag like this is because I'm actually working while we're here. So we're here in our undisclosed location for five weeks and I will be working most of that time. Uh, I work as a software engineer. So I have to bring like, not just any laptop, but like I have this like heavy MacBook Pro basically and the heavy charger. So I need a, a backpack where I can like put this on and you know, go out and do work or whatever. And I also for hiking, just like having a bag that has like the proper straps. I know you can get those like stashable bags, but I just don't feel like they have enough structure and because there's no like mesh panel, they're not very comfortable. So the main part of the backpack opens like this and then it kind of just looks like that and all my laundry that's currently in there this bag by itself is pretty heavy like if you are someone who is like looking for an ultra light backpack i wouldn't recommend this one especially with the backpack bit itself i think it's worth it for me but it might not be worth it for you basically everything that i packed actually doesn't even fit in this bag like fill up this whole bag there's still actually space left because that's how like tight the weight restriction is so in terms of actual numbers my final bag with everything in it not including the things that i wear which obviously i wear the heavier things on the plane weighs 6.8 kilos just under the seven kilos and my backpack with my laptop and my laptop charger in it so kind of like the bare minimum of stuff i have to bring weighed I think about 2.8 kilos so already with just this backpack and my laptop and my laptop charger I only have four kilos left of stuff to bring so here is everything that I have bought in the clothing section so all my clothes fit into this one packing cube basically this is where I put like my shirts pants socks underwear everything in there I'm not gonna pull out the socks and underwear that are currently in there but like I'll tell you the amount so I bought four pairs of socks uh, including the pair that I was wearing on the plane so like there's three in here and one that I was wearing I bought six pairs of underwear including the pair that I was wearing on the plane again uh, so there's five in here something that doesn't fit in the packing cube I have this hat this is a hat by a company called Will and Bear which is an Australian company and I actually thrifted this hat after we got back from Vietnam because I hated the bucket hat that I had so much and I was willing to have the extra weight to carry this. It's actually designed to like fold up quite well and still like pop back into place, which is why I really like this hat. I also have this pair of sunglasses. Next thing I have is this raincoat. This is just by MacPack. I don't know if that's an Australian brand or not. I think it might be. And it's basically a stashable raincoat, so it's po this pocket is actually the thing that you can use to stash the raincoat in. 
Let's see how quickly I can do it. Alright, it's kind of wonky, but it is back in there, so that's my satchel raincoat. I like to go hiking and stuff when I travel and even though it's like a billion degrees and the last thing you're gonna want to put on is a raincoat sometimes if you're gonna be out for a long time you don't want to be like absolutely saturated right so I think like having a raincoat is important however honestly like one of those plastic like poncho ones would weigh way less so might be better than this you know might be worth it for you might not uh, in terms of actual clothes so this is a huge jacket, which you're probably thinking to your why did you bring this to Southeast Asia? It's literally like 40 degrees. Uh, but this was for the plane, but also from Melbourne. So we flew from Sydney to Melbourne before we came here. And it was cold in Melbourne for Australia, right? Like don't judge us, but <laughs> it was cold for us. And like none of the clothes I brought are warm. So I needed like a jacket. Plus I'll use it. I use it as like a blanket on the plane. Plus it's a down jacket. So it compresses really small and you can fit it in your bag really easily. Now in terms of tops, obviously I have this top that I'm wearing currently. I have this little singlet top that I sleep in and I have three more tops. One of these is not a top. So this is just a little singlet top slash like workout top for exercising or for hiking. This is a little like sleeveless top that I'll usually wear under this which I'll get to in a second and then I have this cute little tank top I love insects if you've watched any of my Vietnam videos you know uh, in terms of shorts slash pants I have this pair of like bike shorts so they're kind of like for exercising hiking uh, wearing around the house and they're the same material as this so they match these are both from a sustainable Australian company called Hara the Label. I'll link everything down below that I can find if you're interested. But yeah, I love this company. I have so much stuff from them. And it's so comfortable. It's like kind of silky but really breathable. Love that. Um, then in terms of other pants, I do have this longer pair of pants. They almost look like tracksuit pants, but they're from Uniqlo. They're like exercise pant material. They're basically like leggings if they were if leggings were a bit looser like they're a leggings material but they're not as tight as leggings and again these are for like exercising slash uh i wear them on the plane i can wear them if there's somewhere where like i need to cover my legs because of temples or whatever i like these a lot obviously like black is not an ideal color but i'm such a messy person i can't do light colors too much uh, what else have we got okay this is something i wear on the plane as well and it's basically like a splurge item just so I have something a little bit nicer, I thrifted this uh, originally from Reformation dress and again like it looks like a ribbed material but it's actually that same bamboo material as the other things so it's really light and breathable and I think like if you travel we're, we're here for five weeks and sometimes you just need something that makes you feel like a little bit nicer than just like your gross sweaty clothes that you've been wearing for ages so uh, then what else have we got? I have this one swimwear this is from an australian company as well called indigo luna and it's just this cute little bikini set i have this pair of tevas these i pack in my bag actually they're just like sandals obviously uh and then this i thrifted as well is just a linen long sleeve button up so it's 100 percent linen it does get a bit wrinkly but because it's 100 percent linen it's so breathable it's basically like wearing nothing but it is giving you that layer of sun protection when you're walking around and stuff which i just think is so necessary and my other shoes oh that i didn't want to put on the bed uh that i wear on the plane are these they're the terra venture 2 uh shoes from a company called top o venture it's an australian company as well i think and they're basically designed to be hiking shoes hiking runners but i like to bring them because like i said i like to go hiking and I also like to sometimes have fully enclosed feet rather than having sandals so okay I th and then obviously last but not least masks yeah because you need masks in where we are currently you have to wear masks everywhere that you're indoors you only don't have to wear them outdoors so Next let's talk about toiletries so this is all my toiletries uh, because uh, I don't check a bag either 
everything, all of this is carry on only, means that you have to keep all your liquids in a resealable clear bag and they all have to be 100 mils or under, like in a bottle that is 100 mils or under, regardless of how much liquid is left in there. First of all, in terms of stuff that's in here, one of my best recommendations for saving weight is to bring things in bar form instead of liquid. So there's this New Zealand company called Afik and they make bars for pretty much anything you can think of at this point. These two are like, they're like the sample size, but you'll get heaps of washes out of these because a bar is like, it goes way further than the liquid. This is my shampoo and conditioner. Obviously, depending on where you stay, you might get shampoo and conditioner, but I have really sensitive skin, so I find that it doesn't really like the fragrance in a lot of those things, and I don't want like a rash when I'm traveling. So I use these uh, for that. I also have, if you're into skincare, an entirely solid skincare routine. So this is a face washing bar, and it's also like, I've cut it in half basically, so I didn't have to bring the whole thing. So it looks like this. And then from Ethique again, I have this uh, solid serum. So this is a serum bar. If you're not familiar with skincare, basically like the serum is the thing that you'll put on after you wash your face, depending on how complicated your skincare routine is. I have this serum bar and I have this solid moisturizer. Like I said, I have like really sensitive skin on my face and it gets really dry and unhappy really easily. So I like to have that just because I don't want to be physically uncomfortable for five weeks. Might not be worth it for you, but that's a personal choice. This is a bar deodorant as well. I've actually just cut a little bit of it off because I find you really don't need much of it. Like it lasts a long time. In terms of liquids, I have these two sunscreens. So this is from Banana Boat 50 Plus and this is from Bondi Sands. It's a face sunscreen. I always bring sunscreen from Australia because Australian sunscreen regulations are really strict and a lot of sunscreens that you find overseas we don't sell in Australia because they don't meet regulations. So I like to buy things you can get in Australia. I think this one you can actually get overseas as well. I'll leave a link to this and anything else I can find obviously down below. Another sunscreen product, this is a lip balm by the Cancer Council in Australia, SPF 50 again. And oh, another last but not least in the liquids, Tropical Strength Aerogard. You, or Bug Spray Deet, has different names overseas, we call it Aerogard in Australia. But basically insect repellent, uh, you need 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 to bring this with you like it actually is really hard to buy depending on where you go and you need it like in southeast asia you will struggle if you do not have uh air guard uh and then i also have a tube of toothpaste with me as well but it's in the bathroom so i'm not gonna go get it in terms of other things that are in here uh this is my toothbrush it's actually like a sustainable brand where at home I have like a handle that goes with this, but I just bring like the replacement heads with me to save weight. This is uh, paracetamol tablets. I find that these little bottles are actually the best way to bring these with you rather than having like this kind of thing. Uh, this is Imodium for like if you get diarrhea or food poisoning or whatever. Uh, these are uh, calcium carbonate chews. They have different names depending on the brand, but they're basically to soothe your stomach or if you get heartburn, anything like that. I like to have those with me. And then last but not least, if you're someone who has a period, this is kind of my setup at the moment. So I have just regular tampons. In some places in Southeast Asia, it's hard to buy tampons. You can only find pads. So if that is something that bothers you, like definitely bring it up for tampons. Uh, and then as a more sustainable option, I have one of these. It's like a Diva cup, but it's a different brand. And it basically uh, comes in this little case that you can use to sterilize it. So you just put some water in here and you can put it in the microwave to sterilize it. I'll leave a link down below to someone who made a really good video on using their Diva cup and it being good for travel. I've never actually used it yet, so I don't have much advice on that front. But uh, if you're interested, it is really lightweight. Like it's a good lightweight option for you. And yeah, that is everything in the toiletry section. Let's go to the next section. Okay, so now for my electronics. Like I said, this is the infamous heavy uh, MacBook Pro uh, 14 inch for work. This is the charger for that. And then this is an adapter 
like I said, we came from Melbourne, so we needed like a plug that could go into an Australian wall socket. Um, this is my lightning cable. This is a like USB-C cable. And then this is just an Australian port. And then this is my international adapter. So this is the uh, plug for where we're going, but you can also actually take this part off. And it has like this other connection for different uh, countries. It just has like the little thing. The one thing to be mindful when you buy adapters is you have grounded and ungrounded ones. So you'll have plugs like this for Australia where there should be like three, but some of them only had two and this one only has two. But the third one is for like grounding. So if you have something that has like the three, it's not gonna fit in here. So just be mindful of that when you're buying adapters that you can actually like plug everything you need to into them. And then this also has some USB ports, so that's useful. And then these are just my noise canceling headphones. That's what this cover charging cable is for. Uh, really, really good for the plane. I didn't have noise cancelling headphones when I went to Vietnam and I really struggled so highly recommend that. So that's basically everything I bought with me apart from my like filming setup as well so what you can't see is I film with my phone and I have like a little tripod and a little microphone that I'm using to film this video but they don't weigh very much. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I've already had to buy a couple things So this is everything in the first like literally two days of this trip that I've already had to buy So first things first is this little like passport holder RFD blocking just like little over-the-shoulder bag and the reason I bought this is basically when I traveled in Vietnam I had like a proper over-the-shoulder bag, but it was too heavy to bring this one is like really light Really thin and it's basically just enough room to like bring your passport. I can put my phone in here if I don't have pockets I keep my like hotel uh, key and like my card and everything in here. You can put money in here and it's just like really helpful to be able to like keep it close to you as well and like protect it, keep it safe. So I bought that at the airport. Um, I also bought this. This is something I wanted to buy after I got back from Vietnam but just couldn't find and then I managed to find it in the airport. It's basically a clothesline. Weighs like absolutely nothing and it allows you to hang your clothes up. So both ends have this like hook, but they also have a suction cup you can like hook onto it. And it allows you to hang up clothes. When we ever would wash things in Vietnam and we wouldn't be able to dry them, uh, it meant that like, I would try and hang them off like furniture and stuff, but they just don't dry that well that way. So this gonna be really useful. And then something I literally bought today is just this little tiny bag that packs into this like little tiny pocket that actually fits in here. The main reason I bought this is because where we are currently, we've realized there's not a lot of bins because people seem to like bring their rubbish home with them or they'll like eat where they buy the food or whatever. So having something that we can carry rubbish around in, also carry like water bottles around in or like a little bit of groceries or whatever in is really important. And yeah, like I said, it's tiny, it packs up really light, but has already been used heaps. So. So that is everything I bought with me. And now for the reveal of where we are, we're actually in Singapore. So we've just arrived in Singapore yesterday and we're gonna be here for a week. Then we're going to Malaysia for two weeks and then we're coming back to Singapore for two weeks. So really excited about that. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been posting videos from Vietnam and there's still some more of those to come, but yeah, just a little, a little taste of things to come. We're gonna have some Singapore videos coming up. We're gonna have some Malaysia videos coming up. Let me know down below where I should go in those places, where I should go next, what things I should or shouldn't bring. Keen to hear your thoughts on that. And like I said, I'll try and leave the links to anything down below that I can find. I obviously have already had to buy a couple things, so it's not the perfect setup yet, but I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, when we were in Vietnam, I definitely felt like I had too much stuff. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, I might do an update at the end just to like see if there's anything else I bought after five weeks or stuff that I got rid of or anything. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's everything and thanks for watching.